The Tories are still taking heat over the crap being dumped in our rivers by privatised water companies. This was Therese Coffey on The Laura Koonsberg Show. The water companies have apologised this week and you've pointed out that they are under investigation. But what has made a lot of our viewers really cross is not just as Lynn Pritchard is asking, why has the government over years allowed sewage to be discharged into rivers and seas? But why, she emails, do we as consumers have to pay extra for this to be cleaned up? Because yes, the companies are promising billions on this, but those billions are going to go onto our bills. Why should consumers pay? Well, one thing is very clear. Consumers will not be paying for the penalties or fines that the Environment the Agency that the Environment Agency can levy and indeed off what as well. So there's an element there where that is already has to be taken account that the polluter pays principle. In regards to ongoing investment, there's been a record amount of investment that we've seen since privatisation. And as well as I'm very conscious there have been dividends too. I think last year it was uh, just under 4% mm -hmm. repaid. But, but my question is why should consumers have to pay the water companies, I believe, a £2 billion in dividends recently to shareholders. So why should consumers have to pay to clean up their mess? Well, consumers aren't going to be paying for the, for the illegal discharges, the fines and penalties that have already been levied. But there has to be ongoing investment in these, uh, in these things. We've seen not far from here, we've got the Thames Super Sewer. Uh, it's a multi-billion pound project that's taking over 10 years to do. That will eradicate pretty much all of the uh, need to use storm overflows in the future. Uh, but I'm conscious, and that's why we've asked Offwatt, or Offwatt have taken advantage of the powers they asked for, to link environmental and performance to the payment of dividends. I know mm. several of the water company chief executives are, are not taking bonuses. Uh, but what I will say is that we continue to make sure this we've got this plan Water UK have talked about £10 billion. That's about the figure we were expecting mm -hmm. them to invest by the end of this decade. Uh, and they need to get on with the job and tackle this, including the storm action overflow plans, which I'm expecting okay. on my desk at the end of next month. Okay. So she's saying consumers won't have to pay the fines, so the fines that the, the companies get charged when they release shit into the rivers. Um, but they will have to pay for the investment into improving the system. Now, why that irks people, and I think quite rightly, is because what's happened over previous decades is instead of properly investing in the system, profits, which comes from our water bills, have gone to dividends. So instead of us now saying, well, there's, there's a deficit of investment in this system, um, so we're now going to have to pay more in our water bills to fix it all. So what about all those dividends that got paid out over the past 20 years, right? That's that's the issue. Um, luckily, also on the Koonsberg Show, listening to coffee was money-saving expert Martin Lewis. This is how he responded. It was nice, at least after your questions on sewerage, to finally be able to say accurately that that was a politician definitely talking crap. So, um, and, and you know, you look at the water industry, what did we do with water? We privatised it, but with no competition. Well, when you have privatisation without competition, you have regulatory capture. The regulators clearly aren't working well enough. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we're in the position that we're in. We seem to have got the worst oh, on, of both worlds. We do actually have one water company that is still owned by the public and not-for-profit, and that's Welsh Water. Mm -hmm. And in fact, in Ceredigion and Gwynedd, we have some of the worst pollution of our rivers in England and Wales. So, republic, you know... No, whether they're private companies or Sorry, not. Are you saying, that, are you saying the way the water industry works as a whole well, is I'm a saying, good thing? Well, you or, say, you, or are you it, trying you, to cherry pick one example? My point is, well, I'm not. what we was the benefit of privatisation? What was the benefit of privatisation without competition? We've seen record And do we have regulatory... Water. Who's in charge? Is it your government's fault or the regulator's fault? Well, What's well, happened? It must be one of them. But we have so is it the regulator or your government? Your point, I think, if I may, was that you were saying privatisation is a bad thing and has led to this failure of investment. No, and no, I'm just saying there is there is well, a real life comparison we can use, which is well That's not what I said. I said we had privatisation without competition, which seems to be the worst of both worlds. I'm not sure why we did it. Why did we do one without the other? If you're going to have a privatised system, surely you have to have competition to make the markets work in a market and theory, big, or you have regulation. That's... That was Martin Lewis arguing with Jake Berry, um, Conservative MP. There's a figure, Michael, I want our audience and our listeners and our viewers to bear in mind in regards to this story. Since 1991, there have been £57 billion paid out as shareholder dividends to private water company shareholders. £57 billion. Now, even Jake Berry there, let's take his argument to its logical conclusion. He's saying there is no fundamental difference in water quality between what's going on in Wales and privatised water companies elsewhere. Uh, let's not even talk about Scotland. He, he, he happily doesn't mention Scotland where there is public ownership of clean water. Let's park that. England and Wales, he talks about one authority in Wales, 
It's publicly owned and uh, it's just as bad. Well, okay, let's say we had the exact same situation, Jake. Let's say they were all publicly owned and the water was just as dirty. We'd still be 57 billion pounds better off. You could have spent that on schools, high-speed rail, trams, public housing. I don't know. So even when he's got his gotcha, that's how bad it is for these guys, Michael. That's how bad this argument is for the Conservative Party and people that like privatization. Even their gotcha has within it a kernel of complete failure, an admission that this should never happen, right? Their best case scenario is that, oh, actually, there's no difference and we've just cost you 57 billion pounds. It would have been the same anyway, but instead we've lost out on 57 billion pounds. That is Jake Berry's best possible counter argument. I think it's pretty fair to say when that's the case, you, you know you're on the losing side. I was reading a blog by Robert Colville, who's um, director of the Center for Policy Studies, so the Thatcherite think tank. And the argument he was making is that when you sort of compare the UK to Europe, we kind of invest sort of the median level. There are countries that invest a lot more, such as Germany. There are countries that invest a lot less. Um, and we're somewhere in the middle. And he's saying that when it was nationalized, the problem is that you underinvest in it because the government is always trying to keep taxes low and they're always going to, you know, favor education and health over infrastructure. Um, and, and so privatizing it solves that. Do you give any merit to that kind of argument? No. Look at all the infrastructure that was built in this country through, through the taxpayer between 1945 and, and 1979. And a great deal of it's just been taken for granted and is, is going to rack and ruin. No, it's complete nonsense. He's, he's making an argument which sounds clever to support the state of affairs, which benefits wealthy people like him. He's related to Churchill, Michael, and is, in, is not in the interests of working people. And because it sounds nice and clever and complicated and contrary and you've never heard it before, well, that's an interesting point. Yeah, it's an interesting point. It's also wrong. I don't really buy that for a second, Michael. Uh, you know, this idea that somehow it, it, what the hell? What's been the good? What's been the good story here with water? The average executive in the water industry in this country earns more than a million pounds a year. Bills have have gone up massively more than inflation since 1991. The infrastructure is getting worse year on year. And even if you think the water would have been just as dirty, and I, I don't think that. We've lost that on 57 billion. I do not understand it. And particularly in the case of the issue with Wales and Wales having, you know, also dirty water. It is important to say that the leading cause of effluent and, and crap going into rivers is animal agriculture, particularly things like chicken farming. That is not the whole story. It's part of the story. So, of course, it's true that we need to address issues of animal agriculture. By the way, there are regulations that those chicken farms are meant to adhere to, which they don't. Brilliantly uh, written about by George Monbiot. Uh, in, in both books and in The Guardian. But no, this idea that massive state infrastructure, that's less the private sector. Okay, how about the Three Gorges Dam? How about a little thing called the New Deal by FDR in the US, which created the infrastructure that country is still dependent on 90 years later, like the interstate highway system, a lot of its sort of dams and so on, and infrastructure with regards to one of the earliest forms of renewable energy, hydroelectric. A lot of that goes back 80 years, 85 years. So, um, no, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Just Google the New Deal, FDR, pretty obvious he's wrong. Yeah, so I mean, the, the Tory argument for privatization to me often seems to be, well, the problem with public ownership is that every now and again, the Tories will get into power and they'll run it into the ground, which is it's kind of, it's an argument which is only made by Tories. And it's say, you can't, it, this has to be privatized because otherwise we will destroy it, which is, uh, you know, a, a novel argument to say the least. Mm -hmm.